Welcome to the Simply Joyful Podcast, live with my special guest, Lisa Bevere. Get ready to be encouraged. Well, welcome to the Simply Joyful Podcast Live, Lisa. It is such a joy to have you on the show. Yeah, we've already had so much fun before we even started. <laughs> I know. We, we had a little personal. Wait, right. wait, wait too much. We, sorry, right. people. You're not going to yep. hear it. You're not going to nope. hear it. <laughs> this is like our little, that was our bonding moment. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, oh, well, before we jump into our conversation, can you please share with everyone um, watching and listening just who you are and a little bit about your family and what it is that you do? Yes. Okay. So I am uh, half Sicilian, which is something I'm super proud of. Uh, and my husband is happy about the other half because he's not sure he could live with me if I was a hundred percent Sicilian. I am the mother of four men. I am the grandmother to two grandsons, two granddaughters. I have three magnificent daughter-in-laws. I am hoping for a fourth. Uh, my one son is really sad that he's going to be the oldest uh, Bevere boy to get married if he does not hurry up. He's, he's going to have to figure this out. I write books and travel and speak. I've been traveling and speaking for 30 years. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Yeah. So I turned 60 in June. Um, I've, I write books uh, that I need to read. It, it's just sometimes <laughs> they're more successful than others. Um, and uh, yeah, so I have a New York Times bestselling book, but I think Jesus is possibly more excited about the books that our organization has been able to give away. And we've given away more than 30 million books in over a hundred languages to people who cannot get it because of persecution or poverty. So that is what wow. we do at Messenger International. I've been married for 38 years to an Italian. And uh, so, yeah, you can kind of just imagine our life. It's loud. It's pasta. <laughs> it's pasta. It's competition. Uh, it's, Social distancing has been a huge challenge. Um, sweet people drove along the road. And I, I just, in my brain, I don't know if I thought since it was my yard, I didn't have to social. I went bounding out like a gazelle to their car. And I was like, hi, are you moving into the neighborhood? And I was full on, like a foot and a half away from them. And I tried to shake the guy's hand. And you could see his wife frantically putting up windows, like she put the kids' windows up. And then he said, um, you know, we're supposed to be social distancing. And I was like, oh, you're so right. You're so right. So I'm glad. I'm glad, Christy, that you are not in the same room with me because as an Italian, I might have kissed you on both cheeks. So it's good. It's good that we're separated. <laughs> well, I'm a hugger. So, you know, I, I'd be there with you anyway. Yep, there you go. <laughs> it is torture. It's very weird. Like I was in Costco when everything kind of, like three weeks ago and things were still like, it was new. People were being kind of careful. You know, we didn't have anything official yet. Cause in California, we've been officially quarantined for this. We're going on our third week. Yeah. yeah. And Oh my goodness, like I'm joking with everybody in Costco and it's great. And then we had to restock again. And I had to laugh because it was just like nobody wanted to like joke with me. Everybody is a bank robber right now. John and I went to Whole Foods and oh, yes. we we were like bank robbers. They're all bank robbers. Like we we were almost afraid. Like we ran in, grabbed what we thought we needed, got in the car and realized. We were intimidated by the bank robbers. We did not actually finish it. We, we left without basil or oregano. So we had to go out. I know. We had to go out to another place. And, and I mean, as it. an Italian Sicilian, I'm I mean, sorry, like, those essential. are staples. Yeah, these yeah. are essential. Yeah. In fact, I ran out of our basil, our fresh basil, and I had essential oils. I'm like, this is going to have to do. <laughs> I, got <laughs> down some I had to plant some. I, we we were like, there's, yeah, there could be a famine. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm so excited to have you on because as you know, God would have it, you wrote a new devotional. Let's see if I can get it with the light properly strong. And so I can't wait to have you share a little bit about why you, well, let's start there. Why did you write a book about strong? Well, apparently, according to my publisher, they thought I was a good fit for it with books like <laughs> Girls with Swords, Lioness Arising, Fight Like a Girl. They seemed adamant. They seemed to think. So they came to me and they said, hey, how would you like to do a devotional? And I said, uh -uh, no, 
I don't do devotionals. I said, I have so much guilt tied to devotionals because I have never finished Ooh. one. I, I've never written one and I've never finished one. I have many devotionals that I have started and never finished. I said, no, 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 no. And they said, no, Lisa, we really think this is important. So I said, all right, all right, I'll do it. I'll do it. They tried to make it sound like it was going to be easy. That was a lie. It is really hard to have 90 oh, yeah. different starts and stops. I, I, this was a big challenge for me. And, um, but I, I knew that we were coming into a season. I had no idea there was going to be coronavirus. <laughs> but you knew this season was coming? <laughs> I knew there was, I knew oh there my was goodness. a season that was going to require strength. Because mm. what, I, what I'm seeing right now is a church that has preached truth without love. And truth without mm. love is harsh. Then we have a culture that has responded by preaching love without truth. And love without truth is weak or even worse, a lie. And so I feel like we need to be able to merge both truth and love in our lives. Before we tell everybody else what to be doing, we better be an example of that. And it is a day where it's going to actually take kindness to be strong and strength to be kind. There's just stuff. So anyway, I wrote it, turned it in last February. Then it was getting ready to launch and the coronavirus hit. And I reached out to my publisher and I said, can we launch it a week early? And they said, yes, we can do that. And then we determined as our organization that what we would do is we would do two things. We would give the book uh, for any gift. So mm. we'll have given a dollar, which is not nice because it doesn't even cover postage and all the way to people <laughs> being generous, understanding their BB would give a dollar. And uh, we also did a course uh, called Strong that was free. And so I felt like it was really important to send a very clear message. This isn't the, hey, beautiful one, you're a princess of the most high. That makes you strong because you think you're strong. You know what? I mean, we have sold an entire generation that they can be heroes without ever being in a battle. And mm -hmm. that is a lie. You know, the number of likes I get on Instagram, that doesn't make me a hero. That might be a social engagement, but that is not a battle engagement. And so we need people who actually are really interested in developing their core strength. And sometimes I think the message of strength to women is very confusing, Christy. We have, oh, yeah. we have a church that says basically strong is wrong. Don't, don't, no, no, don't be strong. Don't be, don't be goal oriented. That's ambitious. Don't, don't be angry. Just stuff it all. Do this, you know. And then we've got over here a culture that says wrong is strong. Rebellion is strong. Slander is strong. You know, a vengeance is strong. And so I wanted to stand in the middle and do another challenge. I wanted to say, hey, strong is not wrong. Strong is not wrong. And God is the one who wants us strong. And God is the one in Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18, that said, I'm strong. This is God talking. I'm strong, and I want you strong. And so what does he do to make us strong? He gives us everything we could possibly need to face this day we are in. And mm -hmm. up until now, we've been content to have kind of our armor as an accessory, <laughs> kind of our sword as something we study. And God is like, yeah, now it's going to be a day where you're going to live those things. You're going to live the truth. You're going to speak the word. You're going to study the word, but you're going to not yes. just stop there. You're going to let that word become flesh in you. It's going to have a living, breathing expression in your life and in our children's lives. You know, yep. Chrissy, I love that you have such a heart for moms. And um, when this hit, I had a lot of moms reach out to me and they said, I don't, I don't feel equipped mm. to tell my kids about Jesus. I don't feel, I know, share my faith. I don't know whether we as a culture have gotten so used to putting our kids into child, you know, here, here's your Sunday school, there's your child yeah. babysitting while I come in here. We have gotten so schooled to be spectators. Our children are spectators and we are spectators. And God is saying, 
this is an opportunity to no longer just entertain your kids. But yes, I mean, yes, give them, give them a little bit of that, but let's engage them. <laughs> Let's engage yeah. them with truth. Let's engage them. And number one way I engaged my boys was sharing who God was to me. You know, mm -hmm. answered prayers. I prayed for you. I, you know, when you were little, this is the things that I believe for your future. These are the things I declared over your life. And, you know, seeing my sons do it so much better with our grandkids. So, um, yeah, so when I did strong, I made it easy, easy Devo. I made it so that... It is basically a principle, a scripture, a practical application, a prayer, and a declaration. So if all they remember is the declaration at the end of the day, hallelujah, I'm happy. That's basically where I'm at on this. And it looks pretty. Isn't that a it's beautiful very book? Pretty. It's I've very never had a, pretty. I've never I know. Had a pretty book before. This is my oh, book. you have had other pretty books. <laughs> I've, I've never had Tiffany Blue with Okay, Blue not Blue. yes. Right. What in the world? I didn't think about that. That is Tiffany Blue. See, I like my brain doesn't always naturally go there. Yeah. But yeah. Very this is the only thing in my it's house is color. It's good for a coffee table. So <laughs> But you got to do open it. Now, one yeah. of the things I really enjoyed is that you broke it down. And I, it's so funny because I think through like, that's how my brain has to work. Like, I don't think I could ever sit down to write a devotion and not have it like segmented. So I love that you have these 10 different segments of it. And um, I had to laugh because, you know, in part one, your third devotion is not alone. And as I was prepping for this, I was giggling. I'm like, yeah, we're all like alone together. <laughs> but you no, know, you're like, I, I want to be alone. <laughs> oh my, yeah. Like I got five kids. We're never alone. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's so poignant is that, and that's what I love is that when you do books based on scripture, like God's word is alive and it's always going to hit you right where you need it. And so I was reading through that one today and it was just, it was so good because it talks about the importance of connection. And even though we are, you know, we feel alone in this time of the coronavirus where we're having to stay home or we're not as physically connected with people, it's important to know that we are spiritually not alone and yeah. that we don't have to be disconnected from, you know, from other people as well. So um, can you share a little bit about how we can maybe do a better job of that right now in this, in this time of and staying connected and, and even how people can use your book to stay connected? Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, I have had a lot of pastors, wives, and actually women that would normally have been terrified to do mm. anything, start Zoom calls. And I have somebody who's doing it better than me. She's got 200 women like on a weekly basis what? on a Zoom call going through my book. I'm like, oh. girl, you go for it. I, I, you know, as I wasn't even really understanding Zoom calls until this particular time. But what I love is we're not just connecting, which I think in the past we've had connections, but now we have connections based on consecrated purpose. And mm -hmm. so everything in our lives, when we are, we're kind of being smashed into something where everything is more concentrated. You know, our time with our husband, more concentrated. Our time, you know, in the kitchen, more concentrated. Everything is more concentrated. And we can use that as a catalyst for growth. And so I've watched women uh, tag other women and say, hey, I'm doing this Devo. Do you want to do it with me? And they'll yeah. have all these, like all these people are meeting each other on, on my Instagram, which I love instead of them fighting Aww. one another on my Instagram. They're usually nicer on Instagram, but occasionally I get some, I get some people. I get some people, uh, but they're connecting. They're saying, hey, I, I miss you. Hey, I'm tagging you. Can we do this together? And, you know, it's mm. also on Audible and it's also on yeah. um, electronic books. So if you go to Amazon, yes. you can get Audible and you can get the eBooks. Um, they are sold out of it until April 28th. Of the yeah, I think books. most physical books are sold out right yeah, now. Because and they're, so they're just wanting get the to Kindle. Take care. Yeah, they're trying to get, get the important things. Or they can come to um, Books A Million. Barnes and Noble. Okay. April yeah. 15th, they can go to Target and they can get it from us. We, we bought a bunch of them. Uh, I have to go sign 2000 today. I'm going to go sign 2000. So I'm Crampy eliciting. fingers. Yeah, I will. <laughs> it's not going to be pretty signatures, but they are mine. Uh, and I've got my You're daughter. Like this, my that son. says my name. <laughs> it's, like, it's like this. We're doing it. We're just doing it. It's like a dance. We're doing it. Like, but yeah, my son and my daughter-in-law so that I don't have to social distance or else it'd be throw me the book, throw the book, 
catch it with gloves. I mean, I think you <laughs> might be wearing gloves, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a crazy, it's a crazy time. So um, yeah, I love that. And then I wanted to give, well, I didn't know this was going to happen in such a powerful way, but mom's tools to talk to their daughters. Yes. You know, it, you know I, I don't know. We tried to do a family devotion one time and I'm pretty sure I got in trouble during one of them. And then one of my sons got in trouble. I got in trouble for not paying attention. I got in trouble for laughing. You know, so the thing is it needs to be more organic and the way this book is divided up, it is 90 days, but like you said, it has sections. So you could jump into a section yep. and you could start and just say, I, I want to know strong in battle. I, let's go on that. Or I want to know yep. strong in, in holiness. What does holiness even mean in this day and age? What does that look like? And so, yeah, so I, um, I love that I have the incredible honor and opportunity to do this. And yeah, it's been scary and amazing. I love it. Well, I feel like I could talk to you all day, but I, I don't want to keep you because now you got to, now I know you got to go exercise, get to exercise. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, well, thank you so much for taking time to share with us today. So awesome getting to meet you and anything else you want to kind of leave our audience with, um, like any final yeah. words. Yeah. I want to say something to all the moms out there that don't feel like they can, um, you know, King, you don't have to read King James to your kids. You, you know, they're, <laughs> they do so good with retails. I remember, uh, doing a retail on blind bar tomatoes with one of my sons. And I was always the person going, shh, shh, you know, and then he was always the person jumping up, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And I, invited so some, I know I invited some other mothers to just share some of their stories. And one of the stories that was so beautiful to me was this one mother was reading to her four-year-old son and her two-year-old daughter. And she was doing a retell of the story of Daniel and how Daniel was forbidden to pray. But he said, no, nope, I'm, I'm going to have to keep praying. And so they threw him in the lion's den and how God shut all the lion's mouths all night. Daniel was there in the morning. And she said her four-year-old son just looked at her and jumped up and said, I'm going to pray right now. And he started to oh. pray. And then the daughter started to sing. And I guess I'm sharing that because there are moments like this mm -hmm. in this season that I don't want you to miss. And in all of the weariness of homeschooling, which, hallelujah, you guys are my heroes. My <laughs> children would have been idiots if I'd homeschooled oh, them you're so cute. In, in the homeschooling in in the cooking in the close proximity with your husband give yourself margin for mm -hmm. laughter and give yourself margin for God moments and I just want to bless each and every mama out there because you are woven for this time but take it one minute five minutes, half an hour, an hour at a time, and you'll be able to make it. Absolutely. Yeah. And as a fellow boy mom, yeah. <laughs> I remember nights where I was like, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to be asleep on the couch and they're going to be like running all over. <laughs> and I make think it. they have been some make nights it. like that. Yes. Yes. And then yes. something breaks and you wake up. I mean, so there you go. <laughs> but they're fun. They're messy. They're messy, but they're fun. They're Boys so are, fun. Yeah, they are. Well, you talked about where to find your book, but where can people find your free course on Strong? Because I want to make yes. sure we leave people with that. Yes. Yeah, so if you just go to my Instagram, Lisa Bevere, uh, okay. you can find everything. I, I, I'm pretty sure if I gave you a website, it'd be the wrong address. But I'm. Uh, <laughs> I'll go research it and I'll put yeah. it in the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> you could. They could go to lisabevere.org. I think it is, but it might be .com. Okay. But if they just go to Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, they can find anything. And if it does not have a blue check by it, it is not me. Don't Ooh, okay. Then don't send money to an orphanage that doesn't exist in Nigeria. If I will, oh I know there's people that scam my name all the time. They're like, this is Lisa Bevere's prayer line or all sorts of ridiculous no stuff. Way. Yes. So it, my name has a little blue check by, which means it's been verified. So please only interact with that Lisa Bevere because she is the only real one. <laughs> <laughs> She's you. <laughs> 
I don't oh, know well, who thanks. people are. <laughs> I love it. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. Christy, I loved it. Thanks for everything you do for moms. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Simply Joyful Podcast. Be sure to check out all the episodes available by going to simplyjoyfulpodcast.com. Also, be sure to subscribe here on YouTube so you don't miss all of the other videos that we have coming your way. Have a great rest of your week and don't forget to live simply and be joyful.